what up y'all this is your boy ace here welcome to after news delight so uh i know some of y'all probably wanted to hear from me because i did cover this preview uh this is the only preview i got a chance to recover, uh, cover yesterday so this is the woman's 400 meter flat no femca bowl in here but we did have names like um mary lady uh paulino uh Seda williams uh candace mcleod stephanie Ann mcpherson jody williams natalia cashmere Leaky Clever and uh, Fear De Laza uh, Cofield. So this is how the times went. Let's go into the times here. So Paulino won this event with a 49.87. And I told you on my preview yesterday, she was probably the leading favorite to win. Uh, Sada Williams was right behind her from Barbados with a 49.94. Very good times. These were the only two who finished under a 52. A 50, um, 50 straight out flat. Cofield from the Dominican Republic got a 50.13. So nice night for the Dominican Republic. They had two representatives in the top three. Amazing. Because uh, I said, you know, you got to watch out for Cofield at any time, you know, because she could strike. Now, the rest of the field, McLeod from Jamaica was a 50.80. Keep She kept, she was right in the area where I thought she was going to be. Natalia Cashmere, we're going to get to her in a second because this is the main reason why I'm making this video is to kind of recap what she did. 51.03, uh, top five position, but very disappointing. Uh, Leaky Clever, 51.15, kind of expected that because she's usually stronger in the first 200 meters and she usually blows out after that. Stephanie M. McPherson definitely didn't do well, 51.63. And Jody Williams, Great Britain, 52.31 at the bottom, man. So let's look at the qualification standards for the um, for the 400 meters so we can see who has automatically qualified already. Let's see if I can pull this up. 400 meters. Let's see who's qualified. Okay. So Sada Williams is on top with 25 points. Stephanie Ann McPherson with 25 points. Uh, Paulino, 24. Shawnee Miller Weebo with 22. Kenneth McLeod with 22. And Natalia Cashmere is the last qualifier, 21 points. We still got two spots open. So, Kiel um, Basinska is kind of the, the favorite. Now, Femka Bo, if she decides to run this in Brussels, will likely uh, get enough points to take Kiel Basinska's spot because right now she's holding the last position. Cofield has 18, uh, so she's likely a lock. Leaky Clever is the next person who could get into this final, and it must be a scenario where two things got to happen. In Brussels, Femka Bowl not running, <laughs> and Anna Kiel Basinska probably not running as well, but the other thing is Leaky Clever has to get enough points um, in Brussels to maybe surpass her. Now, if Anna Kiel Basinska doesn't run this race, and Leaky Clever at least gets about four points, she will make it to the final. So that's how that's going to go, guys. But uh, going over this race, man, um, you know, we saw some good things here from, um, you know, Paulino at the top. She was definitely, like, it was her and Williams at the top, like, most of the race. Um, it looked like Femke Bowl and um, Cash Merrick, the last couple of 400-meter, big 400-meter races at the Europeans and as um, the Silesia stop at the Diamond League, it looked just like that. Um, and then the rest of the field was kind of lagging behind. And Kashmir, I knew she wasn't going to do anything because, like, probably about 250 to 300 meters in, she was just never near the top. And I was like, oh, boy, she's not going to make it. So I was very disappointed by Kashmir today. I don't know if she was tired or something. But I kind of – I don't know why I had this weird feeling that she was not going to be in the top two because something was telling me that she was not going to race as good as she's been racing. So – I was looking for that consistency. I was looking to see if anything changed. And she's got to prove me wrong because I definitely had more faith in her, man. And she really let me down. I could not believe it, man. I could not believe it when I saw this. I was like, oh, my God. You didn't even make it in the top four or three. Like, oh, my God. Like, so I want to know what's going on with her. I don't know if she was holding back just to get points. I don't know what was going on. or if it. But remember, the field that Femke Bowl in uh cashmere faced in the last couple of races was not did not include paulino i don't think say williams was in there i think only like mcleod cofield uh i think stephanie mcpherson was in it like it was not paulino and williams like that's why i knew things were going to go different today 
So it's unfortunate, man. But go ahead and give this video a like, y'all. Hit that like button for me. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel, especially if you're new in the zoo. Any comments y'all got, definitely put them below. And if you want to donate to the channel, hit the super thanks button below. I much appreciate y'all. But uh, yeah, this one was a uh, yeah, this one was a bit of a letdown. Um, hopefully, we see some better stuff. I hope Cash Merrick uh, does the Brussels spot. She got some things to work on. Um, Femke Bowl. If Femke Bowl wants double gold at that event, I think she's probably just gonna because she knows she's going to need her energy in the hurdles against Sydney McLaughlin. She's probably not going to do the flat and just going to skip it. Because um, I think she was using the 400 these last couple of races just to get a little bit more tuned up for the hurdles. But uh, hopefully next season she'll be a lock for the final uh, if she does not race. So, And Leaky Claver needs some people to be out. Like <laughs> She's trying to get up in there as well, trying to get up in there. But I thought Leaky Clever being not that far behind Cash Merrick was actually a nice positive for her. So, um, so we'll see what happens. But um, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you all for watching. After news, the light.